to BWTM Sports Live. We are live and exclusive on BWTM Sports Live audio commentary of the big fight. Dave Allen. To BWTM Sports Live. We are live and exclusive on BWTM Sports Live. exclusive on BWTM Sports now. We are getting ready for D-Day. Judgment time for Dave Allen, the white rhino who has been in Bayloric TV for God a long time now. He's coming out with Rocky shorts on. Here he comes, Dave Allen. This is the opportunity to prove today that Dave Allen is more than just a good looking guy who takes a good shot and, uh, you know, can just come forward and take shots. He's got to do more than that tonight. He knows what happened in the first fight. It's good to see Dave has taken this fight seriously. Obviously, taking the rest of his fight seriously, to be honest. Um, tonight, we're going to get to see the best of Dave Allen. Um, hopefully, he's done the work. He looks slimmer, but looking slimmer doesn't mean you've done the work. So, we have to see the proof is in the pudding. He knows what's on the line tonight. And he knows that if he doesn't do his business tonight, that um, he, he is going to be doing small hall boxing. So, this is it. This is opportunity to become Commonwealth champion. If you think about it, the fight before Allen had, he had the opportunity to be, be, become Commonwealth champion and that possibly the very next fight, fight for the British title instead of, uh, uh, you know, the winner of Sam Sexton and um, what's the guy's name? Gary Cornish. Here comes the man from Jamaica, Lenroy Thomas, who holds a win already over Dave Allen, trained by uh, Sean Porter's uh, father, Kenny Porter, who else? Who else? Who has also been featured on the channel as well. We look forward to catching up with Kenny in the future. So Lenroy Thomas, or Lenroy Thomas, makes his way to the ring. Jamaica's produced some very good fighters in the past. We talk about um, Mike McCallum, um, Glenn Johnson, or we've got <laughs> UK's own Dillian White. Um, the list goes on. Um, Lloyd Hunnigan from the UK, obviously Jamaican. Yardy. So, you know, we've got... A lot of guys from the Jamaica uh, or Jamaican heritage, Lennox Lewis, the Lion Lewis, quite a few. So um, let's look at the records here. 20, 32 for Lenroy Thomas, 25 for Allen, six foot two inches or six foot three. The reach here, Lenroy's got a 79 inch reach advantage. Um, Lenroy Thomas, 38% KO ratio. Dave Allen, 56 KO ratio. 112 rounds for Lenroy, 26 fights for Lenroy, more experienced fighter. Now, one thing for me, I'll say from the start, I don't care how good your chin is, you can't keep relying on it. You can't keep allowing people to hit you on the chin over and over again because eventually somebody's going to crack it. You know, Alan tonight is going to put pressure on Lenroy, throw lots more punches, but can he do it for 12 rounds? Can he throw constant punches for 12 rounds? And in the other corner, he's got Lenroy Thomas as well. But, you know, Alan looks sharper. He looks, I mean, in shape. He looks like he's really taking this seriously. So I'm interested to see just how good Alan is going to look tonight. I've heard the stories. I've heard him tell me time after time after time, Dave Allen tell me the sparring, you know, you know, who he's sparred against, what he's done. I've been, I was there in the very dark times of Dave Allen's career where, you know, people didn't pay any attention. It was, on, it was on Bayloric TV before it became BWTM. So 16 fights, 12 wins, nine losses, three um nine KOs, three losses, and one draw. And a lovely little town called Coinsboro. I've actually been to Dave Allen's house and seen Dave Allen. Lovely guy. Ladies and gentlemen, the white rhino, David Allen. Yes, bad guy. And in the blue corner, the champion, TNT from Jamaica, 32 years old, 26 fights, 22 wins, 10 by KO with four losses. He is the current Commonwealth champion, TNT, Lenroy Thomas. So, standing proud there, Thomas. And why wouldn't he? Kisses. His glove looks to the crowd. The crowd looks to the heavens. And uh, Dave Allen in a pair of trainers, it looks. Yeah, it's a pair of trainers Dave Allen is wearing in rocky shorts.
He forgot his boxing shoes. How can you forget your boxing shoes? You only live down the road. Okay, let's see if Alan's going to do anything different. He's got to throw more punches. He's not just about throwing more punches. Here we go, round one. How can you forget your boxing shoes and your biggest fight of your career? Straight away, southpaw stance of um, Lone Roy Choice. Shoots out two right jabs straight away. And then a nice straight sharp left. So he's for Alan is for uh, another guy short squat like this, which is Lewis Ortiz. Thomas has started fast. Alan just taking a look at Lenroy, but Lenroy's already outscored Alan for the first round, and he's walking forward. Is Alan going to wait until he gets Lenroy to the ropes? Lenroy at the moment, shooting that right jab. Positive start from the champion. Alan throws a right straight right to the body. Thomas backs up, throws a double jab, and then the, the double right jab, and then the left right left cross. And then they Alan pulls Lenroy in a headlock across the ropes. If you look at the way Lenroy looks, you know he's got a very... Um, the South Pole, the stocky, the big shoulders. Looks a little bit like Luis Ortiz, who fights tonight against Deontay Wilder. Lenroy popping out that right jab. And a good hard left from Lenroy Thomas. Jabbing to the body, Lenroy. Very bright start here from Lenroy Thomas. Plenty of movement from Lenroy, popping out that right jab. It looks to me, from the, the, the get-go, that Allen's going to wait and walk Get close to Lenroy, very close, and then let his hands go. But Lenroy's not giving him that. He's giving him movement. He's hitting him with the right jab constantly. The right jab is in Allen's face, and he's turning Allen. So he's not allowing Allen to set his feet to get the big shots off at the moment. Allen pops out a jab. Nothing, nothing much behind the jab. Just a little jab. Lenroy responds with three jabs. On his toes, nice and light. Good lens, a digs, a nice body shot there. And Alan and Lenroy clash heads there. There's a head clash. And Alan is dripping blood down the left side of his face. There's blood from it, from an accident to clash of heads. It looks that Alan is cut. See, these things in boxing, you lose, when you lose weight quickly, one of the things that can happen is you can stretch the skin. And that's what can happen when you lose weight dramatically or quickly. That is a problem. Oh, it's not good. But it's not. It's rocky. He, they shouldn't stop the fight. Come on. It's not that bad a cut, is it? The referee is going to the doctor. I mean, it's not that bad, is it? They're shaking, they're shaking their heads. Both shaking their heads. What's going on here? And Alan's talking. I don't think he's happy. It looks like he may get stopped here. Alan is furious. And it looks like Alan's going to be stopped. And he screwed. Oh, dear. Dave Allen's been stopped in the first round. It looked by Lenroy Thomas. Blood all over the left side of his face. It looks like the fight's been stopped. He's furious, Allen. He's absolutely furious. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. When you lose weight, one of the things is when you lose weight and you get lighter, when you lose that weight, what can happen is that you, you, you your skin is uh, can be susceptible to cuts. When you lose weight quickly or you've been away at a certain time and you pull all that weight down, I've heard you can get cut. But from the first round, Lenroy went about his business. He set about his task. But Dave Allen, oh dear. Oh dear. It's not good for Allen. Allen's been stopped in the first round on cuts. But Lenroy Thomas, oh, it's a headbutt. It looked like pretty bad headbutt there. Now then to clash it, it looks like a headbutt, but let's look at that again. I think they should have given at least Allen a round to fight. Big fight. Clash your heads. There you go. Lenroy's got some hard head, but I'll tell you something now, yeah. They should at least give an, I should clean up, they should have cleared up the blood 
and they should at least, at least Allen have a goal around. That's what they should have said. They should have said, look, this is the this fight is so important to this guy's career. At least give him a round. If after a round he was getting his eye popped off and he was getting out boxed and well, he was getting out boxed in the first round anyway. You know, as early as it was. I have to tell it as it was. Len was started the faster. Alan was following him around the ring and Lenroy got off to a fast start. The headbutt, the headbutt, the clash of heads. I still think the doctor and you should have allowed Alan to let him box until the end of the round or at least the second round. How the referee could stop that fight, I, I don't know. Yes, it's a bad cut, I understand. But under the circumstances of where this man's career is, the fact they're stopping the cut, I've seen worse cuts in the British ring and a guy's still allowed to box. That, I'm not being favourite here. I mean, it's not like, you know, his eye was out of his head or, you know, it was a bad cut. I'm not saying it wasn't a bad cut, but he should have been able to box. They can't make the fight again for a third time. I mean, you know, the first fight, Lenroy won. The second fight, if you look at the first round, Lenroy looked like he was sharper boxing, you know, and then the unfortunate clash of heads. It's too early to say who would have won the fight, but Lenroy was going to make, Alan's strategy may have been to go late, I don't know. He must be absolutely gutted, Dave Allen. You know, but um, forgetting your box, forget, forgetting your, if they say, I don't know what the truth is about him forgetting his box, his boxing boots, but to forget your boxing suits, boots in the biggest fight of your career and then come to the arena and then get cut like that. It just didn't bode well for Allen tonight. But, you know, is that a draw? Is that a draw? I don't know. I, I'm not. I, I, it, it might be a draw. I don't know. Because I've got the volume down. So, um, Leroy Thomas, in any case, retains his title. Still gets paid on another date, so I wouldn't be too annoyed. Well, gets paid, but another date. To do what? I can't see. No contest. Okay. I can't see. Um, Lenroy Thomas come back to fight Dave Allen again. Let's be honest. I mean, even Dave Allen said it himself in the interview. I can't see myself fighting Lenroy again. It was a draw. Okay, I thought it would be a draw as well. It looked like a draw because both guys' hands went up. So I don't know, to be honest. Let's see if I can get some sound and see what's going on here, people. So basically, Dave Allen got stopped in the first round due to a clash of heads. The fight is, is considered a draw now. So people have just come in. Um, Dave Allen has been stopped on a cut. It was a pretty bad cut. Oh, he seems to have the left eye. And uh, the referee basically stopped the fight, went to the doctor, stopped the fight. For me, I think the fight should have gone an extra round at least. Let Allen have a chance and have a go. But it's a shame. A big fight like that. A big fight. On an undercard of Calbrook, but I, I still think it's a, a bit of a shame. 
I didn't think the cut was uh, it's a bad cut, but I, it, it wasn't to me. It didn't look like it was impairing his vision. Okay, if he got at the next round and the cut was so bad, he didn't give a chance to go back to the corner. He had what less than a minute to go in the round to give the the corner a chance to work on that cut. Let's hear what Eduardo's got to say for himself. Well, I can't even hear what Eduardo said. I've got the volume down. This is a tough score. At the end of the day, both guys are safe. They go back, they carry on their careers. Um, hopefully we can do it again. You know, thanks for everyone for coming over. I'm, I'm devastated for Dave Allen. He's worked so hard for this opportunity. I was with him backstage and uh, he deserves a lot of credit for coming again and working hard. And uh, boxing can kick you in the proverbial sometimes. It has done for both these guys tonight, especially Dave Allen. One of the uh, factors in any sort of potential rematch will be the healing time for Dave Allen. You've seen the cut a little bit closer than we have. How bad was it? It was bad. So I, I felt maybe that could have given the corner a chance to work, but it was down inside of the eye, but it was a deep cut. And, um, you know, the, the doctors are there to protect the boxers. He's gone backstage to get it stitched up. He's going to need a little bit of time now, but he's going to want to come back. He's going to be screaming for the, the third fight with Leroy Thomas, and we'll have to see if we can get it. Okay, thank you for joining us, and uh, commiserations. Yeah, the contest seemed a technical draw. A disappointing night for all concerned, really, huh? So, one thing I do agree with um, with Mr. Eduardo Hearn is that he said uh, that he wished the fight had gone a little longer. I wished it too. I wish he had the opportunity to get back to the corner. It's not like it was the beginning of the first round. It was coming to the end of the first round. They should let Alan go back to the corner, you know, and, and let him come out for the second round and have a go. He's wearing Rocky shorts as well. I mean, Rocky would have got stopped on cuts like that. But, you know, it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Allen's got stopped in the first round on a cut. Clash ahead with Lenroy Thomas. Um, the cut was a bad cut. I'm not saying it wasn't a bad cut. But what I'm saying is, it was the end. Coming to the end of the round, the referee just said, all right, it's a bad cut. You got 30 seconds to get this cleared up or a minute to get this cut cleared up. Let's see what you can do for round two. Give the lung boy a chance. You know what I mean? But as soon as you had the opportunity to stop it, they stopped it. And to me, that's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So, that's where we're at at the moment with things. Now, as I was saying earlier, um, I mean, it, okay, you want to look at the two, you, you want to see the third fight. Go and look at the first round. Even the first round, Thomas was more active. He was popping out his jab. He was using the landing, the right jab. He's landing straight lefts. He's making Alan move. Alan hardly threw any punches in the first round. Alan had to cut over his uh, left eye. But, um, Thomas started much more active in the first round, much more active. Alan was like following Thomas around the ring and allowing Thomas to let his shots off. I I didn't understand it for what for what it's worth. I mean, do you want to see a third fight? I I don't know what, what, what we're going to see in the third fight. Is Alan capable of beating Lenroy Thomas? That's the question. I just hope, obviously got... Anyone reckon Brooke with the old line injury again? Any three streams left for the fight for you, for boy Butterbino? Um, all I can say to you is try, uh, just try and Google, see what's going on in Google. You can always see free streams on Google. I mean, you just type it in if you want to see a free stream. I've got with me tonight. This uh, this evening is sponsored by Fetaminas. Q. 
Curiosity Cola. Got it from Morrison's. Very nice. Curiosity Cola. Very nice. Curiosity Cola. It's got ginger in it. Ginger ale in it. Very, very nice. Ginger. Tastes real good. So, Fetty Mia's. Fetty Man's. Curiosity Cola. Better than the actual Coke itself. Yeah, I'll be doing the other fights. Um, let's talk a little bit about Kell Brook. I haven't done any previews for him, which is, you know, I've been really busy. But my thoughts on Kell Brook. When you're an unbeaten fighter, you have, a, you have a different type of mentality. You feel unstoppable. You feel unbeatable. You don't feel any man can touch you. And then Kell Brook has gone in and fought back-to-back -back against tough guys who've both taken his best shots and in the process, gone gone about beating him up. The Golovkin was a painful night. The um, the Golovkin fight was a painful night. The Errol Spence fight was a systematic beating, right? Um, and I think McDonald versus Yafai is next. Good fight. Very good fight. God, Jamie McDonough looks old. He does look old. He's a good fighter. I like Jamie McDonough. I always liked him. That's a better result for Alan and getting beat. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. So, yeah, my back to my point. Um, so, Kel Brook, you know, you, you've been a champion. And remember, at welterweight, his physical strength. You see, I always concerns me when, when people talk about a boxer, they pay more attention to his weight than they do his boxing ability. Always a concern. Oh, well, it's the weight with Kel Brook. The weight, the weight, the weight. What about the man's boxing belt? I hear nobody talking about Kell Brook's boxing belt, but his weight. His weight this and his weight that. Weight wasn't an issue against Golovkin. It was the guy who was on the other side of the ring that was a problem. You see, you can't have it both ways. When Kell Brook was a welterweight, he was a big, strong, powerful welterweight. Wait, hold on. You're a big, strong, powerful welterweight. And when you were knocking over the likes like Yo-Yo Dan, wasn't a problem. Wasn't a problem. Then, when you meet against guys who really... I'm going to give you, give you what for. You're telling me about your weight. Okay, so now you moved up to like middleweight. Well, here's the first thing. Here's, here's the, here's the uh, alert or the issues I have of Brooke at light middleweight. And he's going to find out at light middleweight. At light middleweight, all the guys are coming down from middleweight. Natural middleweights. Some even possibly super middleweights are coming down to light middleweight. You see, and none of these guys is uh six five ten, five eleven, six foot, big middle big big middleweight is coming out to light middleweight. Brooke is a big welterweight, but he's an average size light middleweight, and that's the difference. That's the difference. And so Brooke's success at light middleweight will be, I feel limited. Because you've got some very good light middleweights out there who are even better skilled than Kell Brook. Um, Brook's a good fighter as long as you let him fight at distance. Brook can't fight with his back against the ropes. And Brook cannot fight on the inside. Brook is a good fighter if you allow him space and time to work and at long distance. No, Brooke wouldn't have beaten Spence. Brooke wouldn't have beaten Spence. He wouldn't have beaten Spence. Whether it was down the street, he wouldn't have beaten Spence, even if his eye. You're not giving Spence enough credit there, my friend. Spence is a very good fighter. Brooke wasn't going to beat Spence. Um, in my personal opinion, Brooke was never going to beat Spence.
So I'm interested to there's a lot of questions that Kelbrook has to answer for me. First question is, why is Kelbrook coming back to box? Two, not only why is he coming back to box, um, how does he handle getting hit again in those same areas? If I'm Rabchenko, I'm saying to myself, you know what? I've seen this guy get beat twice. Two for two high fights he's been in. How much has Kelbrook got left? How much does Kelbrook fancy anymore? What's his motivation for coming back to the ring? All these questions Kelbrook has to answer. What is he like now as a beaten fighter? Some guys as a beaten fighter fight, some fight better because they haven't got that thing on their back about being unbeaten. And there's some guys who once they got beaten, you break the spirit, they're not the same sort of fighter. Listen, if Kelbrook isn't 100, even if Kelbrook is 100% physical, weight wise, there's a guy in that ring that, you know, has got a great opportunity to, 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 to do something. Rabchenko, I know he's big and strong. I haven't watched too much of Rabchenko. I don't know why I didn't get to watch Rabchenko. Uh, Yafai versus McDonald. Donald, tall, long, good boxer. I think he got beaten at his world title defense against, I couldn't remember who the guy was he fought. He got beaten at World Title. I thought he got beaten at World Title. Out in Monaco, I thought he got beat. Kelly's back to try and win and set up that mega mega fight with Khan. And then he'll walk away. Don't see him winning the belt this way. No, I don't either, Cantona, to be honest with you. Oh, by the way, you guys that are listening in tonight, please let us know where you're listening in from tonight. The big fight as well as like Kovalev is fighting. Bivol is fighting. And don't forget, we had Bivol. Dimitri Bivol was live and exclusive on BWTM Sports. So he spoke to some of the boxing fans live on BWTM. Don't forget to check out that interview before you watch the boxing tonight. So uh, we've made a connection with Bivol, Dimitri Bivol, the, uh, uh, I, think it's I, isn't, I think it's IBF. He might be IBF uh, champion or WBA champion. I don't know which one he is. Light, um, um, light heavyweight champion. So I'm looking forward to see his fight tonight against Sullivan Pereira. That is going to be one hell of a fight. That was a great interview, Bivol. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Kale staying in touch with 147 for calm fight only. Will fight only low level 154 and has no intention of fighting any world champions in light middleweight. That would be a, a really boxing. That would be smart for him. Now I said. I said, I said he should, shouldn't have fought Spence, should have vacated the title and not fight Spence and move up and fight Hurd. He should have fought Hurd. That was a good chance for him to beat Hurd because at that time Hurd was still finding his feet and he beat our boy, Tony Thompson. To, uh, not Tony Thompson. I forgot the boy's name again, but he beat him for the title, Hurd. So I'm not doing very good with my names tonight, but yeah. Yeah, uh, have you checked out our breakdown for Ortiz versus Wilder tonight? I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Ingram, get a studio, dude. You, you, sh you sh Ingram, get a studio, dude. You so should. Yes, we are getting a studio, brother. We're getting a studio as we speak. We're getting a studio, and as we speak, we are building BWTM. I think by before the end of the month, we'll be back as an online TV station. So uh, we'll be back as the online TV station as we was back in big Bayloric TV days. The TV station, a late night show. Um, so we've got some good things coming for you guys. Good things coming. I heard AJ Starry in the Robocop remix. Hello, remake, remake, LOL. <laughs> Funny. While we're waiting for the fight, you got any questions you want to ask about BWTM or myself or general things or stuff you'd like to see on the channel? This is a great time to do it while we're waiting for the big fight. Let's have a talk. Let's talk. Good to hear it's all coming back in. It is. It's been a long time. But talking to the board and the people behind BWTM, and one day I'm going to do a video on the people behind BWTM. You know, we spoke, I've said, listen, we need to have an online channel. We really do uh, for a number of reasons. So we haven't had a home on Google apart from YouTube for a number of years. So we're looking forward to getting that back.
any jobs going, I've got a master's degree, LOL. I'm older that than than thou though. I'd like you to get an interview with Abel Sanchez. Yep, I've just Jamie McDonald now. We're looking at Jamie pictures of Dave, Jamie McDonald banging his jaw. Why do boxers do that? They bang their jaws before they come to the ring. I'm not sure what that is. Are they just checking to see if their chin's still there? Yeah, it's Jamie McDonald versus I think Yafai, the brother of I think the brother of of the uh, I think it's brother of Yafai. Get I'll tell you who it is. Um, I'd like you to interview. I bet you would love me to get an interview with Abel Sanchez. Yeah, we'll get Abel Sanchez back. I think that'll be a tasty interview. Did you all listen to that interview I did with um, Kevin Barry, the trainer of uh, trainer of Joseph Parker? What did you think of that interview? I like the look of Shafiki. So do I. Keep up the exclusives you get, Ingram. They are probably the best on YouTube. It's not the usual stuff. It's laid back and in depth. The the f format is great. Thank you very much. Um, Ingram, we are we the fans. Love you, chap. Thank you so much. Here comes Jamie McDonald. He's just punching uh, the air. Yep. Seems like a jab uppercut. Maybe they've been working that in the gym. Trained by Dave Coldwell. On the subject of Dave Colwell, I'm looking forward to seeing David Price fight fight Povetkin. And you know what? I'm actually going to do a rally. I'm going to rally behind David Price to score an upset win and knock Povetkin out. Yeah, I know. I said it. I said it. Crazy, isn't it? Gav McDonald. It might be Gav McDonald. That's probably why he looked older. It is Gav McDonald. <laughs> it's Gav McDonald. Why do you look so old? It's Gav McDonald. I thought it was Jamie McDonald. It's Gav McDonald. I could be wrong. It looked like Jamie to me. I can never tell the difference. No, it looks like Gav. Yeah, it's Gav McDonald. It is Gav McDonald, not Jamie. My mistake. Jolly good job. People on these YouTube channels need to get to do outside live streams. Brighton by the sea on the pier, Ingram. Live. LOL. Yeah, it could do. Could do. Brighton just down the road. You know what? I'm going to try and see if I can uh, have a word with the Eubanks. I mean, they're only down the road for me. If Price knocks up a he becomes big time. I know. He does become big time. He's got a great opportunity to do it. I don't think the Povetkin chin is as great as everyone gives him credit for. I mean, he hasn't been knocked out. We all want Price to win. Of course we all want Price to win. But nobody really wants to back him. Yeah, yeah, you're on. Yeah, yeah, you're on. What does that mean? Uh, S54, boy. What does that mean? SS, you're on. Okay. There's uh, Yafai making his way to the ring. Bit more circumspect. Calm, cool. Not so much punching the air or punching, uh, warming himself up. Just walking his way to the ring. Nice, calm. How does Spence do against Paul Crawford? Spence is a big, physically bigger man. Crawford, the better boxing skills. I think Spence doesn't move his head. Doesn't move his waist, um, walks in straight lines, but his uh, physical strength is where he works body shots. See, he's a, Spence is a natural middleweight fighting at welterweight. Did you know that? You're on live, bro. Oh, yes, I am. Thank you for letting me know that. Price winning a world title will be up there with Bruno. Uh, but I've remember I said I still back Price to win. Here we are. Is as Gavin Yafai and Gavin McDonald correct? Uh, Yafai twenty six, McDonald thirty one. Uh, McDonald with the six nine in inch and a half inch reach advantage over the six, six inches. And uh, look at it. The fights fourteen for Gamal, twenty one for Gavin, seventy seven rounds for Gamal, one hundred fifty seven for McDonald. Chaos fifty for Gamal. And Gavin, 24. So the puncher is Gamal, you would say. But Gamal Yafai is the puncher. But who's he been knocking out? And the level of position. And then you've got Gavin McDonald, who hasn't as many knock, uh, knockouts, but he's the far more experienced fighter and probably has fought at the higher level. So I haven't looked too much into this fight. I guess for Gamal, this is his breakout fight. Because uh, Yafai, his older brother, thinks world champion. So um, this is his breakout fight. 
Kamel. And I've actually met Kamel. Really nice guy. I met Gamel. Bit of a joker. Gamel. Uh, Kaliafai. And um, the uh, big heavyweight. Oh, I forgot his name right now. And I can see him. He hasn't turned pro yet. Um, anyway, all three of them were uh, Fraser. Fraser Clark. All three of them were in Sheffield. It was the week before Klitschko um, Joshua. And I met them all three of those jokers. They're all three jokers. Absolutely in Tesco shopping. I said, I know you and I know you. I don't know where I know you from. The record, Gavin McDonald, 31 fights, 20, no, 30, 21 fights, 18 wins, five. Uh, is it five? looks five by KO with one loss, one draw. Here we go. Come out, you're fine. Forty fights, forty wins, seven by KO. So he's unbeaten. So this really is his big test. Well, biggish test. I has delusions of grandeur. Cow lives by me in Edgbaston. I've said hi in Morrison's. <laughs> It's nice when you see a local fighter or boxer in the supermarket. You know, uh, if Price pulls off this, it will be a bigger shock than Fury beating Klitschko. Oh, absolutely. But I still back I still back David Price, despite all the people saying what they say. I say he's got one right hand. And listen, he's knocked guys down. Thompson, um, Hamer. So if he catches Povetkin and he drops Povetkin, he might not get up Povetkin. 12 to 1 on Price. Who's everyone got for this fight? I don't know. I'm going to go with Yafai. Unbeaten. He'll be eager for the opportunity. So I'm going to go with Yafai. Younger fighter. I'm going with Yafai. But, uh, okay. McDonald behind a long left jab. It looks like two different weight divisions. It's good right hand there. Ping there from Yafai. McDonald stands up tall, upright. Nice long jab. Skinny, skinny frame, but long. Automatically, I'm seeing something in, in McDonald there when he throws his jab and he pulls back. He's open to a right hand over the top. So he needs to be careful of your fire's right hand. Your fire's a much shorter guy, and you can see it looks like two different weight divisions there. But your fire looks poised. Just missing with a straight jab there. But your fire's trying to make the fight, taking the fight to Gavin McDonald. And McDonald's back is against ropes. Straight away for me, as I said, left up there from your fire. Your fire looks to have the sharper, faster hands at the moment. Faster hands. Your fight pops out a jab. But your fight to me looks like he's the sharper of the two. He looks like he's the guy who's gonna make the fight happen. Whereas I think McDonald's at the moment more experienced, just take his time behind the jab, tuck it up tight and using the jab, circling the ring. But I'm going for Gamal Wing at the moment here. Body shots there from Gamal. Nice as McDonald backed up to the ropes. McDonald now coming forward now. Looking at Gamal as he circles the ring. McDonald tries to throw a right hand, but misses Gamal. Gamal shoots him back with a jab. Nice, relaxed. Style Gamel, left hand very low, almost David Hay like or George Groves like, and right hand cocked by the chin. Like he's ready to detonate a right hand if McDonald makes a mistake. You can see he's looking for that right hand through the middle. You can see it. He's just waiting for McDonald to drop the left hand. You can see, I can see it right here. I can see the gap myself. Yafai from left to right, Gamel, left to right, he's moving. A lot of looking at one another. McDonald makes Yafai miss. It's just slipping his head, slipping. Good head movement there. Yafai has got McDonald's back against ropes, and then McDonald spins away from it. To me, it looks quite simple. This fight, McDonald needs to keep his back from away away from the ropes, and when he pulls his jab, I think he's a double and triple that jab up to stop Yafai coming forward. Because Yafai looks like he's timing with trying. Good combination there from McDonald there. He 
He's got to be careful, McDonald. As I said, left, right, round the round the guard of, of McDonald. McDonald fires straight back. Body shots there from your fire. It's the first round. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ben's a subjective. I would say your fire landed the more harder shots in the first round. Sorry, Sam Dunn, but is Ingram doing a Wilder Ortiz fight later? Uh, of course I'm doing Wild Ortiz. I've talked so much crap about this fight. You think I'm not going to do a live stream? I've told you already I think Wilder's going to start this guy, but I'm one of those guys who didn't want to see Ortiz Wilder. I, mean, I, I, I just didn't. I thought I've seen Ortiz has been very hyped up, but tonight's the night. You've got to put your money where your mouth is and you've got to commentate on it. And, of course, if Ortiz does the business tonight, I'll be the man to say, well done, Luis Ortiz. But I will say this much. Um, I've said it before. A fighter that avoids fighting punches, I'm more suspicious of. And uh, yeah, 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 Ortiz is yet to fight a guy who actually is a puncher. This is round two of your five versus um, McDonald. They both come out with, like, with some real intention to do something. McDonald sharp behind the left jab. Just pokes it out. Not ramming it home, just poking the left jab out, exploratory. Like he just wants to touch the target, feel the target. I like McDonald's upper body move. When he moves, when he moves his head, he moves his body with it, with his hands tucked to his sides. So his head and his body moving all in the same direction, with his left or to right. Now your fire's got McDonald against the ropes. McDonald bounce off the ropes. Nothing happening. Your five moving from left to right. I'm not sure what the game plan is for your five. Bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Nice combination to the body there. That's obviously one thing your five is looking to do. Work the body of McDonald. Smart enough. Work the body, bring the hands down, and then work upstairs afterwards. There's a lot of... I call this as fencing. No one is really, really trying to establish something in this fight. Just nice light jabs and lots of fencing. But nobody's really looking to take a good right hand there from McDonald there. So just imagine it, two guys just fencing, just popping jabs out and trying to have the occasional right hand. But nothing else more than that. Gamel's just bouncing from left to right. McDonald following round, tried a right hand there, Gamal just slipped away from it. It's so bouncing from left to right. And occasionally he'll stop and then let sh shots go. McDonald behind the jab. McDonald now getting from this second round, he seemed to be uh, more authoritative with the jab this round. More bouncing from Gamal this round. And McDonald is getting establishing the jab. Gamal doesn't want that. He does not want. Jamie McDonald to get into any sort of rhythm. But he's just using the jab. This is a round for Jamie McDonald for me. Just using the jab. While Gamal's bouncing around. Good right hand there from McDonald. McDonald's winning his round just by the jab. Nice little combination here for McDonald. And McDonald's missing with shots this round. It's a Jamie McDonald round just by the jab. By the jab alone. Yeah, it's a McDonald round. Nice combination there. Good hard shot there. End of the round. That was a good round, I thought, for McDonald. For me, for me, if Gamal is going to win this fight, he needs to, first and foremost, he needs to stop that stuff with McDonald getting himself into a rhythm. He's got to stop all that. He's got to cut that dead by standing his ground, taking a fight to McDonald, putting McDonald onto the back foot and landing in hard right hands over the top of that jab. So every time McDonald decides to throw a jab, he's thinking the right hand over the top. So we shut that right hand down, that left jab down. So he doesn't get any establish any sort of um, rhythm and work the body. As for McDonald, keep doing what you're doing. Keep popping the jab out. Keep popping the jab out. Keep the jab in Gamel's face and keep picking up points. 
round after round. They've seen clips here of uh, Kell Brook smiling as he's getting his hands wrapped. This is round three. So McDonald just keep popping the jab in Gamal's face. That's all. Really? Because you ran, for me, round one round two, just by the jab. Gamal's going to have to get past that jab and do something different in this round. And don't allow the more experienced fighter to... Here goes Gamal now. He starts a little fast in round three. Tries to work body shots there. And Jamie sort of guides him with his left jab, long left jab, and then fires back a right hand. Nice jab there from Gamal. Rock Jamie McDonald's head back there. Not Jamie. Keep saying Jamie McDonald. Gavin McDonald. Ah, oh, sorry. Apologies. Gavin McDonald's head back there. Gavin now throwing more combinations when he's just not just throwing a jab. He's throwing one, two, or one, two, three. Gamal throws punches, but Jamie's blocking them. Jamie McDonald's gaining confidence in this round. He's gaining confidence in this fight. Gamal's got to hit him and hurt him with something hard. Because the chap, the, 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 the experienced man, uh, Gavin McDonald, is uh, doing better in this fight now. Gamal's missing a lot of his shots, really. And Jamie, um, Gavin's landing good shots through the middle. Nice, good left hook to the body. There. Dug a left, another left hook to the body there from Gamal. Good shots there. Gavin's there, walking forward. It's Gamal on the back foot and Jamie coming, um, Gavin coming forward. I keep saying Jamie McDonald. Because I watch more, Jay, I've seen, watch a lot more of Jamie McDonald fights. That's what it is. Gavin coming forward, using the jab. And again, and again. Nice hard body shots there from Gamal. Your five backs up McDonald for a minute, and McDonald now takes center ring again. Jab, jab. Hmm, interesting there. Gaff McDonald looks fa fairly strong in the in the clinches there. Nice body shots. Stuck some good body shots in there. McDonald when he was in the clinches there. Nice shots there. Yeah, he's up. Boxing far more experienced. Gamal's gonna have to show he's got another gear here because at the moment he looks if he keeps like this, Jamie's gonna um Gavin's gonna win this fight. I keep saying Jamie. My apologies. When is Jamie McDonald fighting again anyway? Body shots dug in there by Gavin. Again. Another round, I would say, to give to, to Gavin. How are you guys scoring this fight at the moment? Just looking at some of the betting here. They're saying that Brook to win the fight within 7-12 against Rebchenko. Uh, they get 2-1 to one on. So people think they're going to stop the fight between 7-12. That's what Bet Fred says on the advert here. There you go. There's the jab. There's McDonald beating your fight to the jab. This is I think round four now. Nice body shot there from Kamal. Nice body shot again from Gamal. A bit wild the left hook though. McDonald's the one coming forward. Gamal's the one on the back foot. Bounce from left to right. It now looks like McDonald's the one trying to make the fight. It's coming forward now, McDonald. Gamal missing that big left hook over and over and over again. Wide slashing left hook keeps missing. And Jim and Gav McDonald's just McDonald's just using the jab. And adding combinations with it. Gamal's best shot is seems to be the left hook to the body. And McDonald's best punch is his left jab. 
good enough for me if he's using the left jab and pinging Gamal with the left jab, then fine. Occasionally, Gamal will just jump in with the left jab. But uh, Gavin's using full height and reach advantage in this fight. He's just using the jab, mainly. Nothing really big to report on this fight. Gamal now forward, done all the ropes. But he comes off the ropes now. Didn't stay on the ropes for too long, which is good. McDonald using the jab. He's pushing forward for this fight. He's pushing forward, coming forward all the time. McDonald. Just nice, sharp boxing. Nice behind the jab all the time. Good right hand there from mcdonald there he measured got the jab and landed a good right hand over the low left jab of kamal nice little combination there from mcdonald he's out working kamal he's out working come on putting nice little combinations to the body better output of punches better combinations from from mcdonald nice combination rat attack tap to the body come on looks just a step off from Gavin McDonald. Everything that Gamal does, Gavin does just a little bit better, whether it's the body shots, combinations to the body, the jab, the right hand over the top, another Gavin round at the moment, better footwork. Gavin is putting a good display of boxing at the moment. Digging nice body shots. He's landing a body shot there under a big right hand of Gamal trying to throw there. It's all McDonald for me at the moment. All McDonald. I'm not sure if if if, if uh, Gamal's ready for this level. To be honest, might seem so, but McDonald's doing the business at the moment. And if the fight carries on like this, I don't see Gamal uh, winning this at all, because he's allowed McDonald to get himself into. Um, a rhythm you can't afford to allow guys to get themselves into rhythm. experienced fighters like that you really can't If he doesn't make adjustments in this fight, then I'm afraid if Gamal doesn't come out and do something different and put McDonald on the back foot, he's going to lose his fight over a unanimous point decision to me. He's got to put McDonald on the back foot. And McDonald now has got his confidence sky high. So they're boxing the guy for the last three rounds. He's made Gamal miss, made him pay at times. So, yeah, it's... Uh, 39 37 sky i've got it on scar frotch's scar frotch's scorecard one round to your five first round and the rest has been to mcdonald and mcdonald is winning the fight simply because he's just behind the left jab when he throws his punches they're accurate most of the time he's made your five miss he's hit him constantly with the jab the difference between your five and mcdonald is when mcdonald lands his punches he makes you in position to throw punches and then lets it go if you fight he throws his punches from too far out so a lot of the times they're missing nice little combination inside there from mcdonald so your fire's gonna have to come up with something different now he's trying to walk mcdonald forward come forward on mcdonald but McDonald very quickly spins himself back round to take center of the ring. And again, your fire is on the back foot. He 
you fight bouncing bouncing like i said for your fight to win this fight he's gonna as mcdonald drops his hands with that left jab he's got to come over the top of the right hand he's got to get himself double up the jab and then throw the right hand over the top he's got to double the jab up get himself into position to shorten the gap between himself nice little combination here from your five nice right hand over top from your five this is a bit around from your five right hand back there double jab right hand there from mcdonald your five's had his moments in this round Again, that left hook, you should stop throwing that left hook. He keeps missing with it all the time. Kevin's still working the jab, still working the jab, but your fire's had a better round this round. More active, landing more punches. Got a smoke, a spliff, a, have a, a dope spliff and knock a wank out. Still fuming. This is Cali Sourland. Okay. You may as well. This is going to go 12 rounds. I can't see anyone getting stopped at the moment. Nice body shots there from Gav McDonald. And then your fire answers or tries to answer back. End of the round. That was a your fire round. I'll give you fire that round. Only just. Only just. So for me, that I'll give I'll give him that round. Probably four rounds or two, possibly. If you don't, if you if it's a strong round, now I'm going to give it to your five for this round. So um, McDonald's doing a better job for me still. But your five has to do it. He's got to take control of this fight. Well, otherwise, it's going to slip away from him. So that was good. That round, that last round was good. I like that. Your fire's got to have more of that. And then some. Because if McDonald, the experienced fighter, can make the adjustments, then <laughs> that might not be enough. I hope he's got more to offer at this level, your five. This is round six. So four rounds to two uh, to McDonald. Nice right hand over the top. Actually, what I expected your fire to do to McDonald, McDonald's just done to your fire. Your fire's dropped his left hand, the right hand's come over the top. So your fire comes out with renewed confidence. Now as far as a good combination, good straight right hand there through the middle on McDonald there. I actually think if your fire pushed forward and started bundling more punches forward, he could um can more effect there. He's more effective like that. Him boxing off the back foot doesn't work against McDonald for me. He's got to get on the front foot and he's got to put pressure on McDonald. Then something might happen. That's where he has more success when he's on the front foot. And here's your fight coming forward in this round. And at the minute, he's winning this round. And guess how he's winning the fight? Coming forward on the front foot. Your fight's not winning his fight off the back foot. I've decided. He's not winning his fight off the back foot because... He's allowing the guy who's got the longer jab to keep pinging him with it all the time. And then his punches are too far. He throws his punches too far out. So if I'm if I'm your five, I tuck up tight, I come forward, I start landing body shots and start taking more chances. Otherwise, I'm going to lose his fight on points. Your five tries to put some sort of headlock on McDonald. Uh, it's a little wrestling on the inside here. So your fire's trying to rough up Gavin McDonald, trying to get him disorganized. That's that's a good game plan. Your fire has made the adjustments. Good right hand there from McDonald, though. Nice combination here from your fire. He's had to make the adjustments. Good body shots there from McDonald. But why your fire's made the adjustments? The one thing he hasn't adjusted is missing with that big left hook. I don't know if somebody hasn't taught him how to throw a proper left hook. 
but he's missing with the left hook over and over again. Big swing left hook. Here's McDonald. He's got your fire against the ropes. Good combination here from McDonald here. He's making your fire miss. Making him miss. And your fire coming forward. But he's coming forward. Comes in a good right hand there from McDonald. Don't be that hurt your fire. That right hand may have hurt the fight or caught him off balance there. It's a good shot there for McDonald. Nice body shot there. Now I'm going to give this right. At the moment, it looks like McDonald's winning this round for me. Oh, no, I left hook there from McDonald. And I left hook to the body for McDonald. I'm giving this round to McDonald. Good combination there for McDonald. A right, a left hook back from your fight for the first time lands. I give that round to McDonald for me. That's a McDonald round for me. Definitely a McDonald round for me. I think he buzzed. I wouldn't say for me. I've still, I think you're fine. I had it four two. Oh, I'm going to give it five two now. Two or five three. One five five two. That'd be seven rounds here. Five rounds to McDonald. Let's look at this round again. The right hand over the top there. Let's look at it again. The cleaner work. Here it goes. Bang. Great shot there from McDonald. The cleaner work has come from. Jamie McDonald generally, I think. I think this is round eight now. Trying to rough McDonald up in the inside there, you're fine. But McDonald comes back with two hard left jabs. Okay, well, the tempo's actually upped now. Your fine knows he's got to come close, but good stuff from McDonald. He's making your fine miss. Your fine's throwing punches, but if you look at a lot of shots, McDonald's blocking it. Like I said, for your fight to win this fight, he's got to take center of the ring and walk forward. He doesn't win this fight off the back foot. If he stays off the back foot, McDonald's going to jab his head off. So his best best hope to win this fight is to get come forward, get on the inside, and work McDonald's body. And don't give McDonald room to get that jab off. Again, we fire off the back foot, McDonald fighting him with a jab. Nice jab. It's your fight jumps in, McDonald hits him with a jab. Again, double jab right hand, then McDonald holds him, ties him up. Then McDonald throws a right hand off the, the, the hold. McDonald on the front foot, makes your fight miss, and I think he hurt your fight there. Oh, did he? He got, he got him a good shot, and his head went through the ropes there. A little very funny thing. Here comes your fire again. I wonder if your fire is tiring. He's missed a lot of shots tonight. And Gavin's kind of thought he's got himself into a groove. Gavin just looks more experienced. Your fire looks green. Looks like he's not quite ready at this level. For me, Gavin, this is a Gavin round for me. Just mostly just popping the jab out. And your fire off the back foot. Not going to win the fight off the back foot. And I think the fight is actually tiring as well. I'd be tiring if I kept winging them left hooks in. I don't know why his trainer's not said anything to him. Good body shot there for McDonald. Good right hook to the body. McDonald has this fight under control for me. Because your fire is not prepared to take bite down on his gum shield and stop fighting off the back foot. Because he's in a, when he fights off the back foot, he's ineffective. When he gets on the front foot and puts combinations together, it's a different fight. And it's shown by the two rounds that he won. Your fire, I've done why he's off the back foot against McDonald. I don't know if McDonald's got more punching power or he's hurt your fire a few times or he's scared of getting knocked out. Again, McDonald looks stronger. He looks strong. To me, I'm getting a feeling that your fire's tiring. Man, I got McDonald up by about four rounds. But, you know, boxing's subjective. 
Depends what you like in boxing, isn't it? Depends what you like. I think your fire's missing with a lot of punches. I think Gavin's hitting with the jab constantly. And every time your fire's think about the fight. Your fire is trying to win the fight from the on the back foot, being a shorter guy with the shorter arms. How does that work out? Right, for another round. It looks like another round. Here we are. Yep. Caught doing replays. Here we are. Again, McDonald on the jab. You fire off the back foot. I think your fire's tied, personally. I do. I really feel he's tied. I could be wrong, but he looks like a tied fighter to me. Nice one two there from your fire. He tried another right hand. He landed well there. That's when he's, that's when he's up close with McDonald. McDonald's jab, uh, Andre Ward style. I like Andre Ward style because he, he's got a style. He's got a style that's uh, adjust for different fights. But I like Andre Ward style. Nice jabs. I like thinking fighters. Benny is married, or he's got he's got a missus. Right hand over the top there from McDonald. Yeah, Cosbelly's got kids. He does mention him. he did it in the first David Hay fight. Nice jab. McDonald to me. He's gonna win this fight in Yanama's point of decision if he doesn't stop Gal. Because Gal is he's not done anything different. I like to see people moving gears. He and yeah, Gamal's only got one gear, it seems to me. And that gear is oh, that gear is back foot, back foot, wait for the right hand over the top. McDonald has met him on the front foot, he's met him on the back foot. We're trolling them, LOL. That's all right. I need some entertainment because this fight is not entertaining. Uh, right hand missed twice by McDonald there. If I was able to move out both those right hands. See, and there are moments that if I get himself in position to fire off shots, and he just looks at McDonald, and that's when the range has been closed down. Yeah, I mean, what is the right hand over the top there? You know, I said it before, the same punch I was looking for McDonald for uh, Gamal to throw to McDonald. I'm actually betting now McDonald to land the right hand over the top to Gamal. You can see it looks like a size difference between the two guys as well. What in weight? He looks tired to me, Yafai. I think McDonald can stop Yafai, you know, just on sheer tiredness. He looks tired to me. Oh, left hook there for McDonald. Your fire looks tired to me. He looks tired. His jab is short now, short, shorter. All his movement looks very much slowed down. Not the same bounce in his step. He looks a tired fighter. He looks like he's looking for a break as well. Your fire's tiring. Seriously. J124 says. I saw your video on Wilder under the influence. Very interesting. Well, it is, isn't it? I mean, I thought he, he was talking a lot about being under the influence and uh, talking about secrets of boxing. And you remember what Bermain Stavern said about getting hit around the back of the head? And Wilder even said himself, talked about punching guys at the back of the head. I mean, you know, and then talked about being in a trance and meditation and all sort of stuff. I mean, a lot of the musical artists in the world, I understand that's how they get inspiration from some say through demonology, I don't know, where they talk to demons and demons inspire them. It's not the first time I've heard this stuff before. So, and I'm not, I'm not naive to it. So, naive meaning, I'm not, it doesn't mean I do it myself, but I've heard of many sports stars and high, high star performers um, using this stuff. So, it's no surprise. And, I, and I'm not surprised to hear Wilder doing that stuff as well. Next round, I think it was round nine or round ten. Kevin McDonald on the jab again. Talking to demons. Well, spirit world. And getting possessed by demons, you know. 
where he talked about the uh, talked about the uh, Stavern fight, where he said when he beat his chest, it wasn't him that did that. He he was outside his body seeing that happen. That to me all sounds like uh, very much spirit possession, demon possession. McDonald, as I said, it's just he's controlling your fire by the jab. Just controlling by the jab. Belly kind of guy, and, and that's some sick shit. Well, believe it, believe it. In that world, well, that that is that's the sort of thing they do. Get themselves in a trance, and there's a few fighters I've heard do that in the past. Right hand from McDonald here. Good right hand on the top there from your fighter. Another right arrow top, McDonald blocks it. Your fight, I'm sorry, has looked very one dimensional tonight. Very one dimensional. A lot of his shots, he, he's not, he doesn't put enough combinations together for me, your fight. He has, you know, he's trying to win a fight off the back foot with, his, with a left hand down low, and he's getting caught with right hands over the top against a guy who's got a longer reach than him. Not really the smartest thing to be doing. So for me, McDonald's winning this round as well because he's just behind the jab. Behind the jab. Like I said, everything McDonald does, he does it that bit much better than your five. He's going to the body, McDonald's throwing it that little bit better. If he's going to the head, it's a little bit better. If he's throwing combinations, that bit better. If he's blocking, it's that bit better. Gavin McDonald's just that little bit better than um Gamal, your five. That's it. Just a little bit better. And your fight still hasn't worked out that fighting off the uh, even in the exchanges now they're exchanging mcdonald's ending it better your fight is the the best the best way for Gabriel to have success is exactly what you do now standing in front of uh, uh, mcdonald and forcing him to fight that's the best success that's the only success he's going to have right now fighting off the front foot that's it He's throwing the combinations here, and he's trading with McDonald. He's making a dogfight now. I'd say this is a last hurrah, personally, because I don't think there's much left in your fight. I could be wrong. Because your fight looks tired to me. Good right hand on the top there from McDonald. Turn the round. David Hay, they call called Hay Faker in the USA. True, but what? Though he made defences, he didn't. He didn't. Uh, undisputed, the cruiserweight division, that's bullshit. He had one defense of that and fought Enzo McInerney. That's what I said. It's possible that the demons are hidden, human powers attaching to people through technology, combining with psychics to manipulate society, music and sports guides, the massive psyche. I've said that, and I totally agree with you there. Um, how's everyone scoring? I only just tuned in. Um, I've got Gavin McDonald. You're way up in this fight. I won't stop counting because I just think McDonald has got this fight under control. Your fire is trying to win the fight as a short guy with his left hand down low, off the back foot. He's not winning the fight because he's getting hit with a jab all the time. The only time your fire has success is when he gets on the front foot and he gets close to Jamie McDonald. But Jamie McDonald does, Gavin McDonald does everything a little bit better than what your fire does for me. Uh, he beat Velio for the WBA, defended against Ruiz, went distance and then lost to Clip. Ha, ah, great. Okay. Uh, great, my ass. MK is their is their aim. Of course it is. Of course MK is their aim. This is round ten, and your fire is, looks like he's thrown to the canvas. When a guy falls to the canvas, the way your fire falls to the canvas, to me it's always a sign of tightness. Jab, 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 right an uppercut, great uppercut there from McDonald. This is round ten. I'm telling you, McDonald can stop your fight tonight. I'm telling you. Beautiful shot there. Your fire backs up again, and here's McDonald. Digs a nice body shot on the right hand on the top, and here comes McDonald now on your fire. Your fire's tired, I'm telling you. I've been telling you for rounds he's tired. Digs two lovely body shots inside. Your fire tries to fight back now, and he's firing back because he's tired. He's hurt. I'm telling you, he's just tired now. It's not, I think McDonald's that big a puncher. I just think it's tiredness. Your fire puts out a weak jab. Hands down, covering up now. Really tired his movements. He looks very tired. A sloppy right hand. I'm telling you, McDonald can stop your fight here. If he just jumps in your fight, he'll stop him. He can stop your fight. Your fight's got nothing left. Body shots in there. McDonald, 
You're fine just waiting, waiting, right hand for the middle. McDonald's just teeing off on your fight. Your fight there takes center of the ring again. But he's hurt. He's fighting on instinct only. I'm telling you now, McDonald can stop your fight. And there comes two good right hands and a left hook there for McDonald. This is a great opportunity for McDonald to close the show here. One, two for McDonald. Your fight is knackered. I'm telling you, he's knackered. He's bouncing around the ring, but there's no rhythm to it now. McDonald again, closing. Good body shot. Your fight looks all like disorganized again. McDonald, double jab, right hand to the body. McDonald coming forward. Your fight throws a combination. There's no strength in it, though. Your fight is fighting on pure heart here. And if he gets the right hand again from McDonald, if McDonald times it right, he can knock your fight actually out here. Good combination in for McDonald. One, two. Your fight took that. He's just tucking up with your fight and coming forward, just taking shots. I get a right hand again. And McDonald just measuring him with a jab, just popping little jabs. And now uppercut, left uppercut, right hand, left uppercut, right hand, and another right hand. McDonald can stop your fight here. I keep saying it. McDonald's picking it right hand over the top. Uppercut. This is a big, I left uppercut, beautiful shot. And another left uppercut. That was the left uppercut. And again, a right to the body. Oh my goodness me, how's your fight standing up? Another right hand, McDonald. And I left up a cup. Beautiful. Picked it again. Your fire is just a put good right hand back from your fire, though. No power behind it, though. McDonald looking to close the show here. Just picking his shots. This is brute. End of the round. What a round for McDonald. I'm surprised he wasn't stopped there. I ain't got to pull your fire out, man. He's just taking punches for no reason now. He's got nothing left. They should stop this fight. His corner should stop the fight right here, right now. And do you know why? Because he's got—he's not coming back with anything. He's got no strength left. He's tired. He hasn't got the power. He didn't have the power early on to knock Gavin McDonald out. So now he's just taking punishment. Left uppercut, right uppercut, straight right hands, left hook to the body, right hands to the body, combination punching. This fight should be stopped right now. This is where boxers get hurt. This fight should be stopped. His trainer should stop the fight right now. What are you sending him out for? What are you sending out for? He's been out, totally outboxed. Why are you sending your fire out for this round? To get stopped. Why are you sending him out for this round? The fight should be stopped now. Why are you sending him out? See, this is what happens in boxing. This is round 11. This is what your fire's first move is to move right back against the ropes and sag against the ropes. It's got nothing left. He's just, it's just instinct of a fighter now. Fighters need to be safe for themselves for another day. He's a young fighter. He can come again. But this is not what's necessary. All right, maybe he might do the 12 rounds. But at some point, Gav's going to hit him again, the body shot, or to the head, and it'll put him in more trouble again. He'll take more punishment. This is round 11. Right hand there from Gavin. Let's see how long it takes before uh, your fight. Your fight looks unsteady on his legs anyway. Gavin just has to time him because he's got the left hand down low by his side. And Gavin, he, I think Gavin should just jump on your fight now, to be honest. There's nothing left there. But Gavin knows he's an experienced fighter. Right hand over the top. And I think that hurt your fight again. Gavin just walking around the ring, just popping out the jab, tucking up when your fight throws shots and just waiting, 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 tucking up, walking forward. Your fight lands a good jab there. Gavin waiting, waiting, waiting. For me, if Gavin's going to move to world class, he's got to finish guys off like this. Right hand on the top from Gavin. Your fire's got no answer to that right hand now. No, no defense to it. Gavin walking. Your fire for just walking. And he, just, and he just tucks up when your fire throws shots. There's nothing in those shots. Good two body shots there from Gavin McDonald. Nice two body shots again from Gavin McDonald. I mean, they look like they're fighting in two weight divisions, to be honest. They really do. Right hand again now. But now your fight's against the ropes again. Now what happens? Fights off the ropes. Sloppy, though. Gavin, just tuck it up. One minute to go to the end of the round. Again. There's nothing much coming from your fight at all. Just pure heart. Just pure heart. And he's lucky he's not fighting a guy who's a, a big puncher. 
or he's fighting a guy that really has a killer instinct, like a knockout instinct. Because if he did, you're fired in a lot of trouble now. Really hurt. Right hand again. Your fire gets the ropes. Looks tired, real tired. Push it, and there he goes. Down he goes. It looked like a push, but I said, from how many rounds ago? Your fire really struggling to get up now. He's absolutely exhausted. And I can't believe Gavin McDonald's playing cat and mouse with your fire. I don't understand it. Your Gavin should have closed his shelf already. End of the round. Kevin McDonald's been nicer. He, he's either been nice or he's got no killer instinct. Killer instinct meaning uh, the ability to, to, when a guy's hurt, take him out of there. Uh, let him fight, build character. That doesn't build fight character getting beaten up in a ring. Um, whenever I butter bean, I know you're upset your boy's getting smashed. No need to be a wanker. Oh, dear. The stoppage has gone. McDonald needs to jump on him. Bad stamina. But he didn't have the instinct to jump on him. Poor for McDonald. It's not poor. Some guys have got natural. See, you, as, as a world-class fighter, I think one of the things you need to do, you need to force, you need to be able to get out there and stop guys. You need to be have that, that killer instinct. He doesn't have that. I'm sorry. And uh, that's, that at world level is not good enough. They might be mate. They don't make me mates. Oh, I believe in the MK. Absolutely. Seen too much of it. This is round 12. If Gavin doesn't stop your fire in a 12th round, it's a it's a it's a disappointing win for me. He should stop your fire. Your fire should not even be going. This is a 12th round now. Your fire missing with big shots. Half the problem of your fire, half of your fire's problem isn't bad stamina, it's bad selection of punches. He's slapping with his right hands now. I mean he's putting punches out, he's just throwing punches out there. But he's knackered. Body shots there for McDonald. If I'm McDonald, I like, I'm looking back at this fight, I'm saying, why didn't I stop him? Unless they're mates. If they're mates, probably didn't want to stop him. But otherwise, I don't know why McDonald hasn't stopped him. 12th round, and McDonald is doing what he's been doing for all the fight. Apart from your fight now, standing in front of McDonald, which he should have done from earlier in the fight, and tried to take the steam out of McDonald's legs. Instead, he was off the back foot, trying to outbox McDonald. No. Shorter arms? Don't think so. Very few people can do that, and your fire isn't good enough to do that. I'm sorry. Get out, better not be Morrison's tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, he looks knackered. Do you know who Gamal looks like? You remember when David Hay fought um, Carl Thompson in the round? He got stopped. That's what Gamal looks like now. Again, rocking his head back again, McDonald. Gamal, fight your team. Gamal's got lots of heart. I'll give him that. He's got lots of heart. But let's be honest. I mean, McDonald could have stopped him, and he didn't. So this is a 12th round, and it's just pure fighting instinct that's kept him on his feet. Good right hand there from McDonald. Right hand back from you, you Yamal. You're not, you're fine. Sorry. Your fire looks knackered. You can see how knackered he looks. He's looked knackered since round nine, round eight, round nine. Right hand again. Absolutely knackered. I don't know what his training regimes he like. I don't know. I don't know what. But this has done him no favors whatsoever. This fight. I mean, obviously, it might have done him favors in the sense that look, right hand again, another right hand, and he's got off balance trying to throw a right hand here and. Jamie McDonald is going to look at you and play more cat and mouse. Big right hand again from McDonald. And another right hand. And your mom looks in trouble now. Really looks like he's stopped here. Big right hand. He's head rocking back again and again. But well, he's going to stay on his feet. Big right hand again. You, you fight against the ropes. Here comes McDonald again. Banging right hand. Left up to the body. End of the fight. And I'll tell you something. Gone 12 rounds. I don't know why McDonald didn't put on the step on the gas. Maybe he was told by his trainer not to, but nice win for Gavin McDonald there.
your five four in only mainly one gear i don't know what the hell he was trying to do trying to box off the back foot against a guy that was taller taller longer reach and more experienced and from round three the first round was his from round three he was being dictated to by the left jab so why and his best success in the rounds he won was when he took the center of the ring and he tried to actually get close to mcdonald other than that, pff, I don't know. Just off shot, get sticker bar, being abused here. Haha. -ha. The way the things have been going, button bean, he'll be heading towards Aldi to interest instead. Yeah, lol, I've been there too. May sneak a bottle of whiskey from Offy. Why not? 4 a.m. Man, shit, that's late. We all King Kong later here for tonight? No, I'm not King Kong, man. I'm wilder by knockout, brutal knockout. And slow ass feet of old Ortiz. Now, nah, man. If you wonder what I'm drinking, it's uh, Fentiman's Curiosity Cola. Check it out, Morrison's. It's better than the real cola stuff. And it's healthier for you as well. The reason why your fire shot is muck is because he's throwing them big, wild left hooks over and over and over and over again. And they were missing. I don't know what the I don't know what who set up the who the genius was who set up the game plan for your fighter box off the back foot against a guy that's got longer arms uh, and, and a superior left jab. I don't know whose idea was that. And I don't know in the trainer why the trainer didn't say, "Hey, listen, you're not going to go in this fight off the back foot. You're going to have to come forward and try and break this guy down to the body and look to stop this guy." Like new cola in Morris says, "No, it's not a new cola. Same cola." It's called Fentimans. Uh, Curiosity Cola. It's the same people that make the um, dandelion and burdock. Beautiful. Curiosity Cola. Piss in my country. <laughs> I'm drinking Pepsi. Cheers. Cheers, mate. She really come on camera and, and, and advertise it, but that's not. We'll probably do that later. May do a late night show or something. I don't know. But um, yeah, you might, got a unanimous point decision for McDonald. Like I said, uh, I expected McDonald to go on and win the fight by unanimous point decision. McDonald's good. I say he's say he's European level. He certainly is not world class. He's European level, and one of the reasons why it doesn't make him world class is he's not a finisher. And he's got to be able to finish at world level. I'm sorry. You may get away with that at European level. But at world level, a guy you may hurt may come back and finish you off. Of course, McDonald wins that fight. Of course, it's better than real cola. It's better for you as well. And if, I were, if I were Gavin McDonald, I wouldn't be jumping up and down the way he's been jumping up and down. I would be like, you know what? I got that win, but why he didn't submit? 116, 112, 116, 112, 115, 113 to McDonald. Of course. Well, what do you expect? You know, it was up by like six rounds before that, before he was getting, before, before, uh, um, you might, uh, uh, Gal, Cal, not Cal, your fire, Galmal, your fire was targeting, taking punishment. It was like a punching bag for about two or three rounds. And that does his, that does him no favors. Yeah, it might humble the boy. You may humble him. But um, he does nothing for his his um, his career. I mean, yeah, he now knows how good he is or how poor he is. But hey, congratulations to Team McDonald. Great strategy there from uh, Mr. Coldwell. Cool, he was totally out of box. Well, what do you expect? How the hell do you expect to win a fight off the back foot? Shorter, shorter arms, sh shorter arms, shorter legs. You got one arm left ha left hand down by your side. How do you expect to win a fight like that? Oh yeah, Taylor's fight as well. Yeah, he just said that he was world class. He, world class, my ass. Your fight ain't world class, and he's not world class. It's a good fighter, good European fight. He ain't world class. Who is he thought less world class for him to determine to be world class? Good fight again, my dog. Not knocking you. But he's not world class, and beating Gamal Yafai does not make you world class. Sorry, the man behind him is world class. His brother, he's world class. 
What's next in the EFI? What's learned next? Well, no disrespect, but I don't know who his trainer was, but I... two things. First of all, I... people might call, call me harsh here, but first thing I want to look at, Yafai's game plan. Why was he boxing off the back foot against a guy that was much taller than him? That wasn't going to happen. Second, get... Second thing, he kept throwing the left hook over and over and over again and missing wildly with it. Why did his trainer say, let's forget that left hook unless you're close? If you're in close, throw the left hook. Otherwise, let's not throw the left hook. It's not working. The other thing is, why wasn't your fight doubling up the jab and stepping inside and cracking the right hand straight through the middle? Why wasn't he doing that? Why was he allowing McDonald to get into rhythm and keep boxing behind the left jab? Why didn't he use some head movement and try and get inside? Try to make something of the fight. And when he did make something of the fight, and he did try and make it into a brawl and, and bring the fight at mid range, mid to close range, that's why your fight won the rounds. So the rounds that he won, his trainer should have said, listen, we just did well with those two rounds. Let's keep it there. But oh no, you want to do that. You want to get off the back foot and move from left to right. All, all excessive energy. He didn't need to do all that stuff. But bouncing from left to right, left to right. When he's bouncing from left to right, he's getting hit with a jab over and over and over again. So ineffective work and allowed McDonald to rack up the points. But again, he's not world class. I, I, I'm sorry, European class, yes. World class, no. It, McCracken was your fire trainer. I didn't see McCracken tonight in the corner. Your fight, I don't know if you, I don't know what your fire is like as a actual fighter, uh, in terms of you know how he prepares for fights. I don't know if he's got stamina issues. I don't know what your fire does as a traitor fighter. But if that is what he's done tonight, to me, I don't know if it's his own ignorance. I don't know if it's poor training. I know it's a poor trainer. I don't know. But you knew you're fighting a guy that's like four or five feet taller, four or five inches taller than you, four or five inches in, in reach. So what the hell you were doing, I don't know. It's not the end for your fight. No, it's not the end. But it certainly is the end of his career, not the end of his boxing career, if he can't make adjustments. Do you know what I mean? Uh, sometimes fighters need to lose to make a wake up call. Your fighter, don't, I don't blame it all on the trainer. What I blame on the trainer is the strategy. But if your fighter's one of these guys who don't listen to his trainer, if your fighter's one of these guys who does things his own way and nobody can tell him different because his brother's world champion, then he's got his own self to blame. If your fighter's a listener, and, you know, he, he listens to his trainer, then, of course, he can do things in sport. It all depends. They're Yemen. They eat in restaurant by nice people. Yeah, of course, nice people. And uh, we've got Mahit Fazeldin, who is actually a really nice guy and is um, from Yemen as well. Good friends of Prince Nazim. He's on our channel. And uh, I think at the end of the day that... Uh, you have to understand, yep, he's Yemeni. You have to understand what you're in the sport for. It's a hurt business. It's the hurt business, you know what I mean? So, Cal wants a cherry pick. Cal wants cherry fights. That's issue. Take Brooker fight. Oh, not Rob. The other McCracken. Okay, Adam McCracken. Well, I don't know, but to me, it, to me, it doesn't look to me, in my opinion, that I don't know what the strategy was, but off the back foot, that don't work. Sorry, it don't work off the back foot. It, it don't work. Sorry, not against a guy that's taller than you. And um, you know, I think he may have got a wake up call as to what this boxing game is all about. Your beaten record's gone. So the idea of emulating Mayweather is not going to happen now. Now you have to, now your boxing career really begins, you know. So as for Gavin McDonald, he's he says he's world class. Then he needs to fight someone. McCrackison, AJ into a robot. Sorry for caps, needed to be said. I mean, he's turning AJ into a robot. AJ... You mean turning AJ into a robot? You're not turning him into a robot. 
And they, you know, that that is that is AJ. You know, he's a bit robotic in, in movement. He's not turning him into a robot. Yeah, he's always been kind of like robotic. Hope now we get the main event of the evening with uh, Kel Brook and Rubchenko. Look forward to see how that fight turns out. No idea why Paul Smith is back on Sky. Uh, I fear idea why he's back on Sky. Connections. Somebody likes him. Somebody thinks he's a good pundit. I don't know. But you see, if it's not broke, why fix it as the expression? AJ needs to be more Lennox than Bruno. Lennox had US style. AJ liked Henry Cooper, like Bruno. It's our culture. No matter what race, colour, it's the old British forward style. That's what I see in AJ. Yeah, it's true. Uh, he's a robot. That's why. Sorry, Ingram, for going on. Well, we can talk about Joshua another time. Maybe not. Tonight. I was trying to avoid Joshua tonight. Um, AJ has been coming in big. He has trimmed down. So we'll see if he can move better move with AJ when he fights Parker. Ortiz, never a day over 40. Face looks too young. Nah, man. Ortiz is close to 48 or 49. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, go Listen to me. I mean, man, saw. Um, just me or are the Smith Brothers program not to smile? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Do you know what? I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be real here. I'm not going to be a hater. But I, you know what? I, Paul Smith, I'll tell you how I really like Paul Smith. I like Paul Smith when he was in the contender, right? I liked him when he was in the contender. And I even, you remember Fight Night, Fight Night Round Three? I even created a Paul Smith who had a massive left hook, right? That's how much I like Paul Smith back in the day. And then he was like middleweight. Then he was middleweight. And every time he saw Paul Smith after fight, he was always whinging and moaning. He had Buddy McGirt as his This is a guy had Buddy McGirt as his trainer. And he was moaning and whinging. And he always kept saying he wasn't fit or he weren't right or nothing was going right. He didn't look great. He, he could have done better. And I was a real Paul Smith fan. And, you know, then he, I backed him to fight against Groves and he got done by Groves. And then he fought the Gale and the Gale done him as well. And, I don't know, I just, he just, you know, I like Paul Smith and he just, there was just something he's like just turned and he just turned. And I don't know if it's because of the social media and the fans were on his back, but I really like, I really did like Paul Smith. I really did. And then it just seemed, he just seemed to change his, his whole mood. His old seemed very moody and very, you know, not very, not, I would say fan friendly. He didn't seem very sociable. He didn't seem the same guy. You know, I kind of felt sorry for Paul, but now I don't know, it just seems quite real miserable now. I don't know why that is. Maybe that's just who he is. But hey. My favorite boxer of all time has always been Sugar Ray Robinson. Always has and always will be. Brook one one five four. Don't tell I don't want to hear no stories. He still he still looks gone. You look at Brooke's face, he still looks gone. It's not what you do on the night when you fight. Brooke to me looks I've just looked at him now at the weight, right? He looks he looks drawn at the weight and he looks old. He looks Brooke looks old. Well he really doesn't look old. I'm not funny, being funny. He looks old. Smith versus Macklin. I'd go with Smith. Smith uh Wilder versus Bow and Arrow. Or windmill bow and arrow talking about Macklin MTK had a show tonight in Essex yeah I heard I heard um one of the guys I know Richie Richie uh what's his name oh 
I've forgot the guy, boy, poor boy's name now, Richie fought up tonight on the bill. Have you seen late 97s, that picture of Ray Robinson in the 80s, Ray Leonard, about 20? And uh, Yeah, I did. I saw that. Yeah, Marvin Ali. Of course I saw that picture. You want to get on the channel, check the channel out. I don't know if it's this one or the other one where I've got Muhammad Ali's brother and the guy who looks after Muhammad Ali's brother uh, promoting him. His name is um, oh Ron Brashear. And there's a book that Muhammad Ali signed, yeah? And they went to get Mayweather to sign it. And what this guy did, it had all the great fighters in this book. And this is a video, not an audio, it's a video. And what he did, Mayweather closed the book and signed on the top on the, on the top of the book, TBE, because he said he's the best ever. Unbelievable story. I don't think Ortiz will soak it up. I don't think Ortiz is as I don't think Ortiz is durable. That's just my suspicion. I don't think he's durable. I think that he's going to get knocked out by Wilder. And at 48, 49, he's no business being in the ring. But okay, we'll see. I think he's going to get blown away tonight. I really do. I really do. Too fast, too young, too active. And listen, you can't not fight for so long and then come back and fight against Mar a guy called Daniel Martis. That you, the guy you should be. There's the, the, this, this sparring partners that Ortiz fought that were bet. Ortiz was not prepared for this fight against Wilder. I keep telling people that. Who put who? Who who you put in the 90s super middleweight tournament? Well, my boy's got to be that tournament. Jeremy McLennan, Nigel Benn, Michael Watson, Michael Nunn, James Tony, Roy Jones Jr. Robin Reed and Joe Kazaki. There's there's your there's your super middleweight eight for the tournament. Wilder's hey Wilder is not young. He's thirty three. No, he's young in heavyweight terms. He's young. Heavyweights get better as they get older. I don't know if you know about that. You're on the Messi Ortiz. He's a killer. Yeah, I get killer against who? Um, I got Tony Collins, Ben Eubank, Jones. Okay. And then Foreman at joint second with Ali at second. Well, we, we, we'll have a new WBC champion tonight, in my opinion. Okay, nice. I think he's going to get starched, Ortiz, but we'll wait and see. Slow feet, inactive. If it had been a couple of years ago when he was active, yeah, sort of good chance. But he's not been active. And you've got to have you've got to have timing. Wilder's been active. He's been fighting regularly. He's sharp. He's actually getting better as a fighter. No, I think if you look, if you go back and look at Wilder when he started his career, and you look at him now, so much more poise. The jab is much better. The right hand is is there. And you look at the guys Wilder's knocked out. He's knocked him out, out, out. I don't see Ortiz standing up to the power. I really don't. And don't worry about the weight. He's a he's he, he's got he's light. That's what he's about. So, all right, Kelbrook highly. Good combinations on footwork, but surely injuries have suffered on both eye sockets. I've got to play it in his mind. I'm more concerned about his mental state rather than anything else. Kell Brook's mental state. How strong is he mentally? That's what I'm concerned about. Very light for this fight. Well, no, no come on. You say he's light for the fight. That's an illusion. Remember, these are heavyweights. And if... Canelo can rehydrate up to um, whatever weight. I think Ortiz is going to go up in weight, and I think Wilder. So I expect Wilder to come in 220, 225, 220, 220. 220, 220. These are heavyweights. So he'll, he'll, go, he'll put an extra 10 pounds overnight. No problems. Easy. Usual weight 220. Well, no, he's probably worked for more speed in this fight. I wouldn't look into the weight thing. Remember, it's overnight. Heavyweights can put on 10, 20 pounds overnight. Easy. No big thing. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about the weight. Don't worry about the weight. Worry about what's going to happen in the ring. Don't worry about the weight. Do not worry about the weight. Worry about the right hand that lands so fast Ortiz don't see it. Speed.
You worry about that. Cubans are good at good good at yeah, they're good amateurs. Brook 13, 13, 12 to 1 to get KO'd. See, Brooks not a big light middleweight, but he was a big welterweight. Got to understand that. If he gets nasty and he gets rough in there, will Brook be able to deal with that? I want to know. Low weight, no resistance to power. Big fight, jitters will get to Ortiz tonight, I think. I can put on six pounds overnight, LOL, 12 to 1 and steal. Brook not getting KO'd. But if he gets, if he get, if Brooke gets derailed tonight, that is the end. I, I, any, who the hell is going to want to watch Khan versus Brooke? If Brooke look, see, big question marks tonight. How good is Kel Brook? How good is he? How much has he got left? And other things you've got to think about as well, boxing fans. I always worry about what a fighter does outside the ring. Fights can put on, uh, uh, can 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 lose years in boxing by. Living heavy, drinking, smoking, drugs, bad lifestyle. You've seen how Brooke blows up in weight all the time. What? How is he living the life after he got beat by um, Golovkin? How is he living the life after he got beat by Spence? How has he been living the life? And now he's he's drunk, you know, putting himself in weight, bringing himself down in weight, putting himself back up in weight, and he's not. Like I think Brooks thirty, he's in his thirties now. So, and he, to me, I looked at him in the scale for the first time a few minutes ago. He looked old. Brook looked old to me. So these are all things. Forget the eye socket for a minute. I'm worried more about how he's looking after his body. It's all right looking good on fight night. It's all looking good on the scales. But how good does that engine run come fight night? After five, six rounds, Rabchenko's still there and he's taking his best shots and he's coming forward. What happens? Who's this guy now? I think it's Fraser Clark talking. I'm not sure it's Fraser Clark talking. But who's this guy? Oh, this who he is. But he's a boxer. I don't know who he is. Well, he could be a Sheffield. He looks like a footballer. Let me, I guess he's a footballer. Let me take a guess. Oh, my God. Jason Quigley. I didn't know Jason Quigley. Apologies, Jason. I thought you looked like a footballer. But there you go. Nice see Jason Quigley. Brooke gets double chins in between fights. Hamid and, and, and Khan drink. Don't believe that Muslim thing with them. I've seen Amir with lager in his hand. I think having Billy Joe Saunders in camp has rejuvenated Brooke. I think he will do well tonight. I don't, I don't care who you have in camp. Not being disrespectful to anybody. I don't care who you've got in camp. I think at the end of the day, how you live your life is how you live your life. You know what I mean? Those not those nights when Billy Joe Saunders hasn't been in camp, I don't know how much Brooke has got left at world level. I really don't. At the at, and the fact that he's fighting at a higher weight division. Remember, Brooke was bullying guys in low weight divisions, just like Broner. He was bullying people in light light weight divisions. When he moved up, he could no longer bully guys. He couldn't walk guys down. That's why Broner is getting exposed in big fights now because. He used to bully guys because he's bigger and strong. He could bully guys and move guys around. That's why when Brooke tried to bully around Golovkin, he couldn't move him. Again, he tried to do the same stuff, trying to bully uh, Spence. These are two guys that are naturally big guys. Uh, Spence, a natural middleweight. And you've got Brooke Golovkin, who's a middleweight, who could come anything down from light heavyweight. So I don't know about that. The Brooke hype train starts up again. I love the lights. Unfortunately, I will not be playing that because uh, we're on YouTube and YouTube will sanction me for uh, playing uh, all of the lights. But anyway. However, my uh, my good friend, Mahib Fasaldin, is not a big fan of all of the lights. He says, come on, bro. You need something more raw. Fair enough. Rabchenko making his way to the ring. Rabchenko smiling. You know what? I don't like what I'm seeing here in Rabchenko. He's got that look in his eyes. You know what look he's got? In the zone. I don't like that. You know when I see a guy coming to a ring and he's got the zone? Rabchenko looks in the zone. I'm telling you, he looks in the zone. 
punches the air, Rubchenko, a sort of punch hook. He looks in the zone, Rubchenko. I don't know too much about Rubchenko. Apart from that, I think, wasn't he the guy that beat um, Ryan Rhodes? Here comes Eddie Hearn walking out his golden goose. Cal Brook. Brooke walking to the ring. That red top on. JD. Brooke taking lots of deep breaths. He's nervous. Of course he is. See Brooke's father in the background there. Brooke's always about the business, to be fair. I can't say he's not, but he's taking deep breaths. Lots of deep breaths. Which boxer has the best mutant? I like Tyson's welcome to the Terror Dome. Um, box entrances. I love Lennox Lewis. Um, good, bad, ugly. I loved it. Um, Robbie and Sly, check it out. Robbie and Sly, good, the bad, and the ugly. Lennox Lewis. That was a wicked entrance when Lennox used to come to the ring. So he had one of the best ring entrances. Hammond had one of the best ring entrances. Eight no stopping us now. David Hay, of course. The chocolate brownies are back. Well, the chocolate brownies for two fights didn't show up. So here comes Brooke. He looks nervous. He looks proper nervous, Cal Brook. I'm not joking. Brook looks nervous. Of course, you're fighting in front of your home crowd in Sheffield. You don't know what you, you know, you've lost two fights back to back. Lubchenko's no bomb, as they say. So Brook is nervous. Brook looks strained to me. Clubber Lang. Yeah, here we go. Brook kisses his boxing glove and steps into the ring. The return of Kel Brook. The special one. Well, that's not quite the case anymore, is it? Is it? The, oh, Billy Joe Saunders in the corner there. That's nice. Billy Joe with a nice suit and tie on. Very nice, Billy. But I said Brook 31. Uh... Jerebchenko, one inch taller. And he's got the reach advantage, Jerebchenko. Jerebchenko's got a knockout ratio, 71% knockout ratio. 31 fights to 38. Brooks had the more fights. Had the more rounds. And Jerebchenko's got the higher knockout ratio. Interesting fight. 33 to 1, the draw. 12 to 1 on for Jerebchenko to get the knockout. 8 to 13 for Brook to get the knockout. Interesting. Batman coming out to the Croy kid must be. Make or break for Brook. It is a make or break fight indeed for Kel Brook. See, I am not one of these guys who jump into the, oh, the weight's going to make a difference. If you can fight, you can fight. If you can't fight, you can't fight. I don't care how much weight you pack on or you take off. It's not about, I'm telling you, Rabchenko looks up for this. He looks up for this. He's, he looks in the zone, Repchenko. I'm telling you, he looks up for it. I love the way all these guys just stand in the corner. They look at the fighter. They're not ever fighting. I think Kel looked awesome in the first five rounds against Errol. Not sure if he's weight draining him. Let's look at Rubchenko's record. 32, 31 fights, 20, 
29 wins, 22 by KO with two losses. Rubchenko can punch. Rubchenko can punch. Should do a little more research in Rubchenko. Can anybody do me some quick research on Rubchenko and what Rubchenko's done in his career very quickly in terms of who he's fought and who he's beat? And I, I know he beat Ryan Rhodes, it looks like. But that was an old Ryan Rhodes. And here he is, the Sheffield lad. Lost to Mundine and Harrison. Okay. 38 fights, 36 wins, 25 by KO for two losses. Ladies and gentlemen, making his return to the ring in Sheffield, Kel Brook! He punches the air, Brook, to the Sheffield crowd. Lost to Harrison and he lost to Mundine. Come on, Kel. Box like Dom teaches you. Move, slip and jab, move. Just do it, son. Not people cheering Brooke on. I hope he, I really hope Brooke does well. I really do. I want Brooke to do well. Of course I want Brooke to do well. But I'm not buying all this stuff about his weight. He's now fighting a light middleweight against a guy who is naturally a light middleweight. See, is Brooke going to be able to bully guys around and have the same power? It's all right doing it in sparring. It's all right doing all that crap in sparring. Now you have to do it against... You're in a weight division now where you can't just go around bullying guys like you were bullying at welterweight division. And Rubchenko can't wait to go. I'm telling you, he can't wait to go. This is round one. Rubchenko takes center of the ring and out. Straight away with a left jab. Shoots a left jab out. Rubchenko comes forward. He's looking to make the fight. On the front foot, straight away, Rubchenko. Brook off the back foot. Double jab from Rubchenko. Very upright. Very upright. Not much head movement from Rubchenko. He looks straight away like a guy that Brook can nail with a straight right hand through the middle. He looks made, tailor-made straight away for Brook with that straight left. Very basic. Uh, in terms of, yep, a right hand's ready there from Brook. The question is, does he have power at light middleweight? I mean, against the top. Big right hand missed there. Brook moved out of the way of it. One, two from Brook. Rubchenko moved forward and used the double jab. He's on the eye of Brook straight away with the double jab. Rubchenko just closing the range down. Brook's got to be very careful tonight. Really careful, because Rubchenko's already landed two to the face. And um, question marks are, will Brook be scared of getting hit in his face? That's what I want to know. Right hand over top. Brook's getting hit early by Rubchenko. I'm telling you. I've never fancied Brook off the back foot against the ropes. Never. And Rubchenko's got the right thing. He's walking Brook to the ropes. Good right hand there from Brook. Brook is great when you uh, allow him to set a pace. But if you back him up and put him against the ropes, Brook's not so comfortable. But Rubchenko's got the right idea. Right hand over the top for Rubchenko. Rubchenko's looking to land the right hand. I don't know if Brook can see, but he's got to be careful of the right hand. Brooks, nice with jab. Beats him to jab. Nice jab there, jab there from Kelbrook. Rocks the head back of Rubchenko. And again, nice jab there from Brook. Yep, yeah, find the jab. Find the range now, Brook. Good left to, to the body there from Rubchenko. Tries the right hand. He's a bit uh, wayward. I'm not wayward. Good left to the body. Rubchenko's a bit, um, I will not say prehistoric, but he's a bit uh, basic in the way he, he sets himself up. Now, Brook a bit more to the front foot, popping the jab. Double jab there from Chenko. Nice wicked body shot there from Brook. Brook now taking the stage, taking the center of the ring. Like it. It's better from Brook. Nice jab there from Chenko, though. Jab from Brook. Nice jab. Rocks from Chenko's head back. Right hand there from Brook through the middle. Chenko. Face starting to bruise up. Good right first round. Rubchenko back to the corner. What if he still fancies the fight? I think Brook, for me, in the first round, looks a bit tight, indeed. Um, nervous. 
Rubchenko came early, tried to throw the old right hand over the top. Brook was slipping the right hand most for the most part. The right hands and left hooks. Uh, Rubchenko was set up, looked very basic. Um, he looks tailor made actually for the one two of Brook straight through the middle. Not much in the first round for both guys. Brook just looked tight for me. He didn't look, uh, of, and, and, and rightly so. He isn't last time he was in the ring, he got beat, right? Jab one, two, nice one, two there. Yeah, he two things Robchenko has got set up for against Brook. Um, the right uppercut has got space for Brook, and the, the right hand through the middle. Those two shots are Brook's best shots against Robchenko. And the knockout's going to come. He's going to come for a straight hand for right hand through the middle or an uppercut through the middle. It'll come through the middle. That's what I think if it's Robchenko. And if Robchenko is going to cause a knockout against Brook, it'll be the looping right hand over Brook's left left hand. So that's how it's set up. Robchenko's got to win the fight by Brook being against back against the ropes. And for Brook to win the fight, he takes center of the ring. That's how the fight plays out for me. Let's see. This is round two. Brook now getting the starting faster with left jab. But Robchenko's landing his own left jab. Don't discount the Robchenko left jab. Robchenko, one thing he's got is a nice left jab. I'll give him that. A nice left jab. He's finding Brook with it. But Brook's finding it with his own left jab as well. Jenko doesn't want to work on the inside. That's interesting. I still don't know who's physically stronger between the two guys at the moment. Jenko and I come forward. Big right hand there from Brook. And an uppercut for the middle. There's the uppercut I talked about. Right hand. Oh, down goes Jenko. I told you. What did I tell you? Down goes Jenko. This looked like it could be over. It's over. Brook in two. Brook into great shot. What did I say to you? I was saying it, didn't I? I said the two shots for Brook. Either the right uppercut or the straight right hand through the middle with Robchenko. He looked too open. And well, there you've got it there, people. So he's got power. He's got power at 154. Tremendous punch from Brook. But um, there are going to be bigger nights ahead for Kel Brook. Um, I'll tell you something now. If Khan gets hit with that power... Oh dear, I think Khan could end up the same way as well. Great to see Kelbrook back. He was nervous in that first round, but like I said, he was open. Did a Josh Tyler fight? Okay. All right, give me a moment and we'll see if we can get over to Josh Taylor as well. So congratulations to Kelbrook. He knocks out Robchenko. Nice win for Brook. Nice comeback win. And uh, he did look nervous before the fight, but yep. Yeah. I just want to see the replay of this. Rubchenko came to fight. Rubchenko came to fight. Trust me. I'm not going to sit down and say Rubchenko's a bum. I'm not going to sit down and tell you that. Rubchenko came to fight. I'm back, Baba. I'm back, Baba. It was a lovely shot, though, from Brook. Rebchenko was cherry-picked. Well, I, I think, come on, let's be honest. After fighting Golovkin and, and, oh, look at the uppercut. What shot did I pick? Tell me before, what did I, what shot did I say would be the punch to stop Rebchenko? If it's going to be a knockout, I said right hand, either straight through the middle or, through the, or, or straight through the middle, the straight right hand, or the uppercut. That was the straight right hand and the uppercut. Straight after I said that. I, I think it's highly um, 
harsh to turn around and say that Brook um, uh, Brook has cherry picked. He fought Golovkin and Terence Crawford for two guys who potentially will go on to be Hall of Fame fighters. So that's harsh, very harsh to turn around and say that. Um, look at this. Here it comes right hand straight for the middle. But the uppercut started it though. The uppercut started it. Here it comes. Bang the right hand. Ooh, Opchenko. I'm sorry, but Rubchenko was a bum. That proved nothing. Listen, he's gone and fought Golovkin and he's fought Spence. So, and he's fought Sean Porter. He's back. He says, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I would advise him to keep well away from either Charlo brother. Keep well away from the Charlos. Mm -mm. No, Mr. Brook. He's probably fought a better chance of fighting someone like Hurd. Keep well away from the Charlos. No, brother. Nice win for Brook. Congratulations, Kel Brook. But if I were, if I if I were um Mr. Carl, I'd be looking at the Kelbrook fight and thinking, hmm, there's a reason why there's a reason I didn't want to fight this guy for. Brook is now the WBC, I guess, international champion or silver champion. You know what that means? Who the WBC champion is at light middleweight, that's who Brook will probably be after. Heard is a bad matchup for Brooke. Yeah. Well, do you want to put him in with Charlo? Do you want to put him in with Lara? Yeah, really? I would rather see him against Heard than fighting against Charlo. Sorry. His eye wasn't tested. Billy just Saunders, there he is. Billy, that looks it. They have a nice suit and tie on. Go on, Bill. There's Greg. I think it's Greg Merritt in the back there. Really tall dude. Um, he's been the key behind uh, Brook and Team Sheffield. The boxing those those fighters there that have uh, the, the the Ingle camp. Um, remaining uh, in good shape. Oh, Brooke taking photographs of him kissing this girl. He's made a statement to kiss these girls. Well, he's kissed this woman three, four times. It's like Instagram kisses they look like. Well done. Kel, good to see you back. Charles, WBC champion. Scrubs at world, don't he? <laughs> Nicole. Taylor just dropped his opponent. Oh, great. Taylor, a real world-class fighter, unlike the Sky Show. Sal Salim Ali versus Cal Brook. I'd like to see that fight. I'd rather see that fight, to be honest. There's a good fight. Cal Brook versus Salim Ali. So I'm glad to see the, uh, the special one is back. I hope you've enjoyed the commentary. And we'll be back tonight for you know who. Deontay Wilder against Luis Ortiz. The fight that you all have been waiting for. You all have told me how Ortiz is going to do this and Ortiz is going to do that. Well, tonight's the moment of truth for Luis Ortiz. That Sky Show was hot garbage. Good performance from Cal and glad he didn't quit this time. Poor <laughs> creature. Charlo relies on his power, which is real. I think still think he's a good boxer. I think he can win on points against him. 
Charlo's a damn good fighter. He's a damn good fighter. Both Charlo brothers are damn good fighters. And it's the one that's trained by, I think that's the one trained by uh, Derek James. Damn good fighter. He spars regularly with Terence, uh, uh, Spence. So um, I'm not sure. I think Charlo would be. I mean, I've spoke to Derek James already, and he said that he'd welcome a Brook fight. So um, Derek James said he'd love to see um, Brook versus Charlo. He says he's waiting for Dominic Ingle again. Well done tonight, Kel Brook. Of course, everyone's going to want to put you in with everybody in the division from Lara to. They, they, if, if, if you fought Charlo, you beat Charlo, then they'd say he wanted to fight this or that or the other. So, you know what? Good luck to the lad tonight. He's had a tough time after taking the two shellackings he's beaten, taken back to back, and all the rest of it. Brook is back. Glad to see he's back in the ring. Happy to see him celebrate. Happy to see him have the belt, a belt of some. some some form or format around his waist to make him feel like a champion again he's a champion even if it's a lower you know some would say it's insignificant it makes him in the top 10 of wbc he can get up in the morning see himself in the top 10 of wbc and he can say yes i'm on the road to fighting for another world title and that's what it's about so i don't think nobody wants to see a spence rematch with brooke come on come on man why the hell did he take the GG fight, a guy 20 pounds heavier, and after weight in 50 pounds heavier? What the F? I don't know. Money. That's all it is. Got some balls. Of course he's got balls, Brooke. If somebody can tell me what Eddie's saying, it's fine. I've got it on the volume on low. But, um, yeah, you can tell us that he was sold that crowd and book looked devastating tonight and you know, wouldn't you love to see him fight Khan? And, you know, we can make the Khan fight happen. And this man's one of the best, uh, light, he'll be one of the best light middleweights in the world. And if he hits um, anybody in the light middleweight division, that sort of power, you know, you can see what Kel Brook can do at light middleweight. You've seen the power tonight. I expect to say something like that. I, I haven't seen it. Kongi, I hope he wins. It's as simple as this. If Kong can take the power... He wins. If he can take the power. Oh, I don't think he does. <laughs> and of course, if he lands, because Kong's been out the ring for so long, what's the stamina like in a tough fight? What time are you going live for the Ortiz fight? Uh, as soon as possible. I want to see Deontay humbled. <laughs> Deontay looks like an astronaut. Listen. If Deontay knocks out Ortiz the way I think he's going to do, a lot of you guys are going to have a lot of respect for him. I don't want to hear nothing about Ortiz being an old man. I don't hear anything about Ortiz. Ortiz is considered the baddest man on the planet, all right? I don't want to hear anything. Too many killers. I want to see Wilder versus Joshua anyway, so don't mind Wilder win. But only be silver. Maybe Eddie will push for Charlo voluntary defence. Surely not. Oh, for sake. He got no mercy. <laughs> uh, that would be absolutely savage. You... <laughs> you put him in against Golovkin. You put him in against Spence. You give him a, a, a warm up, a nice warm up fight for Charlo. It's like, what? You put him in three killers in the ring. Okay. Nice. I hope they don't put him with Charlo next. I really hope they don't go and put him with Charlo next. Please don't. I think they're going to try and make the Khan fight. If, if, if one of the flattens or teeth off in three, yeah, slow ass. Hey, slow ass feet. Wilder should nail this guy. Uh, he should ping this guy, literally ping him, ping him, ping him. I'm telling you, from long range, bow and arrow style. Bang, right straight through the middle. I want to know what happens the first time Ortiz gets hit with that right hand from, from Wilder. If his legs buckle, it's good night. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I don't care how much boxing ability Ortiz has got. When that right hand lands on Ortiz's chin, that big chin of Ortiz, you can't miss Ortiz. He's got a big head and a big chin. Once Brooks' eyes gets tapped, he will unravel. He shouldn't even be fighting. Maybe he, he likes danger. 
Hearn milked him for a GGG, and it's him to blame. But will King Kong swat him? LOL. South Cuban South Wall inside and bang left in on Wilder. Yeah, I told you, he's got to be active. He is not prepared to fight Wilder, in my opinion. Who is his warm-up fight for Wilder? Look at that guy. Does he the sort of guy that would prepare you for a Wilder fight? Come on. Wilder's ready for Ortiz, man. He's ready for Ortiz. I don't think Ortiz is ready for Wilder. Can Wilder take punch? Yeah, of course he can take a bloody punch. Of course he can take a punch. That's how many punches can he take? And you look at Ortiz. What's Ortiz's best punch? The left, the left, the left jab. The left, um, left jab. The straight left. He steps back. He throws the left hook, left jab, left over the top. It's left over the top. That's what is Ortiz's best punches. Ortiz is no Stavern. No, he's no Stavern. Right? And that can be bad because, you know, he's no Stavern. If he gets crumpled tonight and gets destroyed by, um, while he destroys Ortiz tonight, I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to hear no excuses. I don't want to hear nothing. Absolutely nothing. Thank you. Ortiz footwork is made. He just he, he, I'm telling you. Ortiz had 300 amateur fight. He's ready for women Wilder. Having 300 amateur fights just means that you've got lots of wear and tear in your body. Having 300 amateur fights doesn't mean anything when you're like 48 years old, apart from your ancient. You all weren't listening. Now with your Wilder's favourite, he sparred Lewis for the F's sake and Ortiz to win, head to, to win. But timing, boxing's about timing, you know. If the best time Ortiz should have fought Wilder was as he beat Tony Thompson or, or, or Bright Jennings, that's when Ortiz should have fought Wilder. Have you thought about Ortiz playing hurt to draw Wilder's windmill? Oh, it don't make a difference. That right hand is going to... Have you? Who have you seen in the heavyweight division that right hand is landed on? And not gone to sleep. But name, name, name your person. Uh, I hope Ortiz does a foreman. Mora was 2.14 in that fight too. Yeah, but... How many times has Mora been down as a heavyweight? He's down loads of times as a heavyweight. But Cooper had him dropped. Um, hope the referee don't jump in. Exactly, playing her. If Wilder starts his windmills, I don't think so. I think you're going to see a better Wilder tonight. People talk about the windmills. Listen, that's after you had the guy hurt. Just, just make sure T start walking to that right hand. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm not right on Ortiz off. I'm looking for the right hand straight for the middle. And my man Ortiz going over like a sack of potatoes. Do happens. Oh, do happens. You don't want to do happens. Who was getting the shit beaten out of him from round one? No, man. Come on. Come on, Paul Smith. Smile, mate. You're on TV. Have a smile. Right. I'm out of here. Okay. When you talk about the Harpers, right? Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question when you talk about the Harpers. Go do your box trick and find out who else has stopped the Harpers. You'll find Povetkin. But before that, Wilder stopped him. He'd never been stopped before. He was French champion. I did my research on Du Harpers. Du Harpers doesn't get stopped. He was uh, he was the first time that he'd ever been stopped in his career against Wilder, but he was getting a beating. The French guy walked through Wilder like he's nothing. Really? Josh Taylor just won second round KO. Well done, Josh Taylor. Right, I'm out of here. I'll see you all later. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out the Dimitri Bivol interview on the channel. Don't forget to check out our behind-the-scenes interview. Why didn't came? We got stopped. Uh, Provecki, we stopped him. You mean Provecki on PEDs stopped him? After that was the night that Provecki got caught with the PEDs. So Stavern didn't fight him. So Duhapas came in, pulled, the, pulled him out of the crowd, of, and he was fighting with trainers. That one. Come on. Come on, man. Wilder's had his 15 minutes of glory. Okay, I'm telling you, 
every fight Deontay Wilder is actually improving. He's improving people and I expect him to look his best tonight. I'm telling you, boxing is about timing. And I think this is the perfect time for um, Deontay Wilder. I think this is the worst time for Ortiz. Hasn't fought in over a year. When he does come back, he fights Daniel Martez, who's not even as tall as Wilder has in his dimensions or anything like that, in a complete blowout. So basically, he's been out for a year and he just comes out and has a blowout against a guy who could uh, he can have better sparring. I'll be back at 2 a.m., people. Trust me. Um, check out the uh, while you're waiting tonight for the big fight, check out our preview to the fight on BWTM. Check out our Dimitri Bivol interview we had live. Check out our interview with Kevin Barry, the trainer of uh, Joseph Parker. Check out our interview with Peter Fury. Check out what Bermain Stavern thinks of the Ortiz, Lewis Ortiz fight. He's back in Wilder to win the fight. So check that out as well. And um, imagine the mockery if Ortiz won. No, it's not mockery. I think um, Ortiz, is a, Ortiz is a good fighter. I just don't think he's all at the height is cracked up to be. I don't. So uh, when the going gets tough, Ortiz will get going. That's what I believe. But we'll see. We'll see. I'll see you all tonight. 2 a.m. Boxing is about opinions. I could have got it wrong. Justice League. Oh, yes. And I know you're all talking about weight, but let me give you this. You're all talking about the weight of Wilder. Are you not concerned about the weight of Luis Ortiz coming in lighter? Are you not concerned that being lighter, he may be faster, but he may not be as durable? Just a question. I'm out of here. See you all at 2 a.m. for Wilder versus Ortiz.